Fig. You know me, Fig. Y'all already know this is the great S.120. You know Around me right now, I'm going to break down something I'm trying to break down. You know what I'm saying? It's now, now word of mother, I freaked it. Like, cause I it's said two, that it's two versions. I be around a, a, a bunch of individuals that that I consider like it's the, the first like version, you know, part of the, the octopus version. As you may say, it's remix, eight arms on the octopus, right? It, and I'm like, um, you had asked me something a long time ago, nephew. You had asked me, um, mm, like, like who, who do I deal with and so forth and so on. Yeah. Uh, on that note, <laughs> I deal with like I told you, real people. Yeah, right, well, you know, this is like the great S.120. You know this is Craig's world, bogies. and this is an interview it's given by my little bro, man. Yeah, holla at your boy. What you want to talk about? Now let's see TV, and I'm back with Shaw 120. What's goody? What's good? What's good? How's everything? Everything is great. Everything is great. How you been? Maintaining, trying to stay focused. Okay, okay. Now, how long you been in Far Rockaway? Um, I moved out here when I was like 13. So you figure like 30 years. 30 years. Who are the rappers that people should stay tuned with that's from Far Rockaway? Man, that, that, that's a good question. There's so many of us, right? Um, definitely King Streets, T. Dot Rags, Porsche Box, Cap City. See, that's why I said this, that, that's, that's, that question is so crazy. Mm. Um, Mr. Dead Eye Bailey. Um, damn. I put myself at the bottom of the toe pole, like Mr. Far Rock Mills, that's why I said I can just keep going on. Mr. More, more Green Scraps, Scraps More Green. Um, that, that was like a trick question there, man. Mr. Bobby Lee, like there's so many motherfuckers, like you telling me, those are all the motherfuckers that I would go to war with. You know what I mean? It's also some best kept secrets that a lot of people ain't ever really heard about here. You know what I mean? Uh, 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 honorable mention, dudes that been away for a while, slow. That's the motherfucker that I would, I would go to war with, like lyrically. Like, these are motherfuckers that is nice. Like, everybody that I just mentioned is nice. You know, a lot of body squad, look, it's, it's a whole bunch of body squad things I didn't mention that's not out here at this time, but I would mention them. Like, I got my brother Feeve, a lot of bro from Craze World that I'm, like, it's, it's so. That shit is complicated, just to say who would. Uh, Farrell, uh, Un Pacino, like, I could just keep going on for days and days, man. That, that, that's a, a question that I couldn't answer, man. You know, but right now, uh, who, who's the runner-up to step up right now to the plate? It would be Mr. King Streets, if that was the thing that you was asking. And do you feel that Far Rockaway show love to all their artists? One thing I, I love about my hood, man, this will make it my hood so funny. Like, if you from that hood, they're going to show you love. Like, if you're from Hamels and you're King Streets, you are the fucking man right now, honestly. And I love that. And that's a big ass hood. That ain't no one block hood, two block hood. All my, all my, all my blocks out here, they long as a motherfucker. From Edge Man, all the way down the block. Like, this is the thing though. There's some people on my, that fuck with King, there's a little bit over here that for, But as a whole union center, I don't, I don't know too many people that get the whole union center of their whole, of their whole borough behind them. I really, I, I've, ne I've yet to meet that individual. Even 50 and all of them, none of them had the whole union center of everybody in their hood. Know what I mean? Yeah. I can't wait till I see the day for that, though. I'm trying to do that right now. I'm trying to be the only motherfucker to do that, you heard? And where you feel like is the best spot to eat at in Far Rockaway if somebody coming out here? Okay, I got a couple of favorite spots out here. All right. All right. My, my, my first favorite spot, yo, Unc, I ain't trying to shit on you. You know that. I love Geno's The Life. I love Geno's The Life. You know that. But it would be Ralph's, right? That's number one. That, that would be the first spot I'll eat. I eat Ralph's, right? Right. Then Johnny Cuisine, I don't know. They, he, he been giving Ralph's a little run for my money lately because I do love me some octopus and all that, some, 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 some oxtails and all that other good shit. I'm into that. Like, so I would say Johnny Cuisine first, then Ralph's, then Geno's. I got to throw my people shit up in there because if not, my uncle will kill me when you see this interview. Shout out to Geno. Shout out to my uncle Ruggiero. I know you gonna kill me. So yeah. Tranquilo, tranquilo. Your uncle owns Gino? Yes, sir. Yo. They've been in my family for the last 43 years. That's what a lot of people never knew about me. That That's the Dominican side of my family. You know what I mean? I'm half Dominican, half Haitian, so. Okay. That's the Dominican side of my family. 
See, that's stuff nobody knew right there. And that's good. You know? <laughs> yeah, I see you, you know, you got a little shape up and everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I try to keep this thing right. Uh, now, nah, who, who's your barber? Well, my barber is a brother named Bodie. B-O-D-D-I-E, Bodie. Um, he's located up on Far Rock on Mott Avenue, right next to the 7 Cab Company. Um, one of the nicest barbers out here. Not because he do my shit, but because he do my shit. Yeah. And that, that's the go-to person, like let's say- I I'm mean, for me that is, you know what I mean? Okay. A lot of people don't fuck with the straight razor. When I was up north, I was fucking with the straight razor. I was just using it for something else. But no, nah, I'm only playing. <laughs> All right, so can you tell us how you came up with your name? Oh, that's a good question right there. Well, a long time ago, there was a thing called the Five Percent Nation of Islam, Nation of Gods and Herbs. And um, there was a thing called 120 Mathematics that we had to study. And in order to, for us to acquire 120 knowledge, we had to get this all on cap. We had to remember these things. Like, it was a certain amount of questions and answers that they gave. It was 120 questions and 120 answers. And that's how you know another thing about me. When I when I embed something in my heart, even with everything you deal with in life, it's rules and regulations that you gotta follow. A lot of dudes don't follow the rules and regulations. I've seen dudes walk around here that's supposed to be blood, that don't know no, no lingo, they throw it up for no reason. They, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the same way with a lot of dudes that deal with a lot of things in life. You got a lot of Muslims that don't make prayer. You understand me? They don't make they don't make rock hot. They don't they, they don't they don't they don't make salat. They don't do none of that. You understand me? And they quick to run up in Geno's and get some of that good old pizza that come out the oven that just went in there with the pepperonis. You did? But I mean, yo, but on a serious note, so this is how you know I bet things in my heart though. So you had to study 120 mathematics. And there was a question to build degree in the 140, and it said, What makes rain, hail, snow, and earthquakes? It said the earth is approximately covered under water, approximately three-fourths of its surface. By the sun, the moon having these attractive powers on our planet while it's traveling at a terrific speed of 1,037, one-third mile per hour its way around the sun. The sun draws its water into Earth's rotation, which is called gravitation. And the fine mist that neck and eye can hardly detect. As this mist ascends high and increasing with other mist of water in a different current of the atmosphere until she becomes heavier than gravitation. Then she distills back to the Earth and forms a drops of water and forms a drops of ice, which depends on how heavy the mist was or the current of air she was in. There are some layers of current, very cold and warm, and some are very swift and changeable. When this mist strikes a cold current, it becomes a solid ice on a small, light, fluffy form, which is called snow. The reason it rains back on our planet is because the water cannot get out of the Earth's atmosphere with its high speed of rotating around the sun makes it impossible. Earthquakes is caused by the sun of man's spirit of high explosives. In fact, all that above is caused by the sun of man. That's just one question we had to learn with an answer. And look, I'm going to show you that because people say, oh, that's just one question. The fourth degree in the 114 says, Why do we run Yaqub and his made devil from the root of civilization across the hot Arabian desert to the caves of the West Asia, as they now call it Europe? What does it mean of EU and the ROPE? How long ago? What did the devil bring with them? What kind of life did the devil live then and how long before the Musa come and teach them of their forgotten trick knowledge? Because they started causing trouble among the righteous people. Accusing the righteous people of telling lies, causing them to fight and kill one another. Yaqub was an original black man and father of the devil. He taught the devil to do this devilish thing. The root of civilization is Arabia at the holy city of Mecca, which means the knowledge and wisdom of the original man started when the planet was first founded. We ran the devil across the hot Arabian desert. We took from them everything except their own language and made them walk every step of the way. It was 2,200 miles. They were savage and lived in the caves of Europe. EU means hillside. R-O-P-E means a rope to bind in. It was 6,019 years ago. Musa came 2,000 years later, taught the devil how to live respect for life, how to build a home for themselves, and some of the forgotten trick knowledge that Yaqub had taught them, which was devilishment, telling lies, stealing, how to master the original man. My mouth kind of dry right now. I, I, it's more to that degree. My mouth is mad dry. But that's how you know when I say up top, my bro say down low, when I say 360, and he say 365, and I say so, whoa, then this, this is what I mean, this shit that you got to know, man. Brothers don't walk the walk, they just be talking that shit, man. That shit be bugging me out. Next question. Can you describe how it was growing up? Well, growing up, I mean, everybody talking about the difficult childhoods they had. My, my childhood wasn't really that difficult. 
I made it difficult. You know, everybody be talking about, yeah, you know, like, I think everybody went through a, a, a subject at, or a period in their life where shit was difficult, you know what I mean? Like, no lights in the crib, no heat. I'm quite sure everybody went through them little situations there, right? I don't think nobody is excluded from that. Um, I kind of chose on my own road to perdition, though. Like, I chose to do the shit that I did, and that basically led me to the position that I found myself in most of the time, the struggle. See, the struggle become a struggle most of the time is it's, it's when we put it before ourselves. Other than that, it just become like a task. You know, it's a difference between a task and, and a struggle. You know, the task is what's set before you for something you to do, for something for you to accomplish. The struggle is what we find ourselves doing when we wind up not going to the things that we supposed to be doing and taking care of the tasks that we supposed to take care of. Like, for instance, a task to me, bringing home that money for your family so the heat can stay on, so the gas can stay on, so your kids can stay clothed, and you can do all the above things, right? The struggle come when you take that money and you go trick it on a bitch, right? And you don't bring it home to the family, so the things that need to be done with the money is done with the money. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it, it's always what we set before ourselves. That's where the struggle come about. My struggles have been my own struggles. It's things that I set before myself. So far as me dealing with my struggles, I, I try to correct all the errors that I made in the past by not making When did you decide that you wanted to start rapping? Man, I've been doing that forever, man. I was doing that before I got locked up when I was a little youngster listening to my brother. My brother was one of the first rappers out of Far Rock with a hit record. <clears throat> if you look up O and E and O and E, that's how it's on there. O and E and O and E, one and one. There's a song called Phenomena. It's probably got five million views by now, you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. him and my cousin, they used to tour with Houdini, you know, and that's where I really, he, he inspired me to really continue to do it, you know what I mean? That's, that's my big, big little bro there, you know? Yeah, hey. What are some tips you'll give someone that want to start pursuing their rapping career? Just do it, like Nike. That, that's point blank to the period. Whatever you want to do in life, fuck rap, even if it ain't rap. Part of, part of the, 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 you know, the language. But even if it ain't rap, whatever you pursue in life, man, pursue it, man. Because all you can do is do it. Well, you might not do it, man. And if you don't succeed, you try and try again. That's how life is, man. That's what really make up life, man. Honestly. And how do you feel about the new artist that's out right now? Well, I mean, I'm really like caught, caught in between with it. Because, I mean, I hear a lot of rappers that that's out there. And I, I, don't, I don't like their music, meaning that... I don't praise what they what they talk about, but I mean, it's a business. That's what music basically has become. It's no longer a, 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 a listener's trade. It's become what sells now. So, I mean, there's some people that I really think that should stop doing what they doing, stop rapping, you know, because basically most of them sign indictments against themselves and shit like that, but then some dudes is just talking that mumble shit that ain't talking about nothing. You know, every three words, another word you understand. So I mean, like, it, it, it's a mix. It's a mixed feeling. It's a mix. It's a mixed feeling with it. Like, it's some people that I do like that I really like that. You know, every time I listen to them, I get a, 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 a good feeling inside. That's what music supposed to do. It's supposed to make you feel good inside. You know what I mean? I don't want to. I don't want to shoot a motherfucker right after I listen to a song, and that defeat my whole purpose. And what's your purpose of like listening to music? It's my purpose of listening to music. Same thing as me writing music. It's for my meditation. It, it, it helped me meditate. It helped me it helped me think about other things that's more positive than some of the negative thoughts that might be going through my thoughts at the time. Because I mean, we all sit there and we all have demons that we deal with. It's all negative thoughts that we deal with. Just like we deal with positive, we deal with negative. So anytime that I'm feeling, you know, a little bit under, under the weather, anytime I'm feeling blue, missing my mother, 
music, music has been the thing that has soothed me. It, it has relaxed me. It has made me think of all the good times instead of the bad times. And that's what music is. Music is a form of meditation. And how do you feel about all the new sets and gangs that are coming out right now? Well, you know, I'm up. My bro CLK, you know, man, shout outs to my brother CLK. You know, he t he, he just recently took the gag order off me. So I'm gonna tell you what I really think about it in, in this whole totality. All right. I feel that all the gangs and all that that's coming out, it, it, it really is going beyond where it should have went to because when we did it was for a purpose. When we started this Blood Nation, the Jubian United Blood Nation, you know, mad shout outs, mad shout outs to Mr. CLK, Corey King, mad shout outs to Hellraiser, mad shout outs to old man Larry O, um, mad shout outs to Dizzy, mad shout outs to Magoo, um, Black O Mac O, uh, Man Do, uh, Pimp. Um, man, shout out to, to to all my bros, man. That that that's that's still in the struggle, and most of my bros that's home. Man, shout outs to Daddy, um, Dead Eye, Mr. McKenzie. You know, when we started this game, shit, it was for a different reason. I ain't gonna go too much into it because it's right. I, it's not something that I'm proud of now when I think of it. Because at the same time, I still hurt my people, but sometimes your people have to be hurt so they can understand that they can't be doing all the hurting. You understand what I'm saying? But going past that, um, when we started, like I said, it was for a purpose. Now most of these gangs are just a bunch of little dudes that's getting together, claiming some shit, and just doing a bunch of bullshit. No disrespect. I mean, even even going back before, before this blood shit, when we brought it over here, uh, on the East Coast, if you look at all of the gangs from the Five Point gangs back before us and back before them, and every gang was put together with organization for a crew to get together, and they was there for a collective cause or something. Most of the shit that's going on is just a bunch of motherfuckers just running around, getting involved with some shit that they, they need not get involved with. And my thing to, is this, man. I, I've been banging my whole life. Like... For all y'all that, that that's just trying to get into this shit and thinking that this the end life, man. Stop being 69 niggas, man. For real, man. I'm not saying you're a snitch, nigga, but stop being a follower, man. Be a fucking leader, man. Honestly, man. You want to impress me? Get a gang of doctors. <laughs> get a gang of lawyers. Let your gang consist a bunch of lawyers. And that go for a lot of young niggas I'm talking to. I ain't talking about you niggas that been doing this like me. You understand? I mentioned most of them. Anybody that's under any of their families, because a lot of umbrellas there that I just mentioned, and Mac, Mac Ball is all type of motherfuckers. Um, all the rest of this shit, man, as far as I'm concerned, man, I, I, that shit is here today going tomorrow type shit. So far as my, my, how I feel about the gang situation, I feel like a lot of motherfuckers need to grow up and realize that it's certain environments that you should have gangs in. It's certain environments that require gangs. Every environment don't require a game, but now it's become where everybody has a game, and there's something wrong with that. Now, have you ever been incarcerated? Yeah, well, unfortunately, I went away for 15 years. Um, don't want to go too much into this. Dude did something to rape my sister, put her in a coma, beat in a coma, raped her, and I did what I did, unfortunately. I've been home 15 years on light parole, about to finally get off. Um, and like I said, man, when I said about the struggles that we put before ourselves, that was something that I couldn't let anybody else do. I got mad brothers. I got eight older brothers. Like I couldn't let anybody do that. But I, I stepped up to the plate, and then I moved on from there. And I, I think that's what life is really about, man. And can you describe how it was inside the prison? I mean, it's no description for that thing, man. I mean, I could sit there and tell you a thousand stories and all, because it, it wasn't 
it was some good days and it was some bad days, just like everywhere, you know what I mean? Um, would I have liked to spend them bad days and good days in jail? No, I, just the opposite, but prison, I, I, I think prison is made for people, man, honestly, but just not the people they have in there right now, some of the people they have in there right now. That, that's, the, the way I describe prison is, all right, you know how the you know how the cows and, and, and all the sheep and all of them they get put behind the gates and get fed with the hay and all that and they be inside inside of that little that little cubicle. That that's how prison is. It's a, it's a bunch of men that's putting cells and women that's putting cells in boxes. That if you stretch out and and put your body on this side of the wall, your feet can touch that side of the wall, and they put in these boxes and every time the bell ring is child time or it's time to go to the yard, they control by bell. So it, to me, it's like, it's just like having a plantation or, 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 or even a place where they slaughter animals at. That's what that shit is like to me, man. Like that prison, that prison life, my, my whole time there, like, like I said, I did 15 years and it, I, I, I lived a lot of good, good days in there. When I say that, I'm not, trying to give people a misconception that prison is anything other than what it is. But it was some good days. I was around some good people. Like, there's good people everywhere. That's another thing people don't understand. They think everybody in jail is bad. No, that's not real. Because if that's the case, and everybody out here ain't good. <laughs> and if that's the case, why would 100 people be killing 100 people out here and 100 people be killing 100 people over there and 10,000 people be killing 10,000? I mean, so it's good and bad everywhere. You know what I mean? It's balanced. But it was some good bros that was behind that wall with me and we sat down, we ate together, we broke bread together. When it was time to ride, we banged out together. Like, and that's why I said that prison life is kind of different. It's, you know, it's not something that I would want somebody to do, put it that way. Even though I feel prison houses is made for certain people, I don't think that a lot of people that get locked up and what are some problems in the prison system that you can name quickly? And what are like your quickest solution to them? All right. This is the problem with prison is, man. It's no one problem. What is the quickest solution? That God start an earthquake and just collapse every motherfucking prison at the same time. That's the easiest solution I can think of. And don't hurt nobody while you're doing it. That's all. Now you are one of the founders of the UBN on the East Coast. Um, can you describe what it was built on? Again, I didn't, you know, that's kind of answer other question that you asked me. I, I went into that question, matter of fact. Mm. I didn't know this question would come. But it was built on brotherly love. That's straight to the point. Let me explain the situation real quick. That's why I said I didn't really want to get into it, but I mean, we got nothing to hide. I mean, history is definitely supposed to be taught about, right? Because that's how you know history. Yeah. Well, so we get it out the way. I'm half Dominican, half Haitian. Let's get that out of the way. Boom. All right. There was a war that was going on inside. It was a group called the Latin Kings. I know you heard of that. Yeah. All right. It was a group called the Nietas, La Familia. And then it was just us, the brothers that was running around in jail. And it was a point that Brothers was being initiated and cut by Latin Kings, Nietas, and La Familia, just so they brothers could join their group. And OG Mac, you know, Mr. McKenzie Day, um, CLK, a couple other brothers got together and then they came up with UBN. You know what I mean? And the rest of it speaks for itself, man. Like, it is what it is. It grew from there. Like, the cuttings calmed down. The cuttings went down by 100%. Um, the stabbings went down by 90%. And everything was all right. And I think that's what life is really about, man. Sometimes, you know, people be so quick to say, yeah, they fight fire with fire. Sometimes all you need is just a couple. Do you believe that these values are still there? What values are you speaking about? Brotherly love. You know, I mean, brotherhood. I mean, 
Yeah, to a degree. It, it's like that with everything in life. You got to understand. I'm explaining something to you, bro. Because I know this one of the last questions, right? Yeah. All right, I'm explaining something. This is how I was taught. There's real, there's fake. There's life, there's death. There's man, there's woman. There's right, there's wrong. There's up, there's down. There's no in between, right? Does it have the same values? Yes. Does it apply to everybody? Do they make them applicable? No. Um, that's why you gotta be careful who you have in your surroundings. Know what I mean? Me, myself, I surround myself with nothing but real bros. Like right now, you know, I'm involved with a group called Hybrid. What it is is Blood and Crips that's together in Brooklyn. Just like some of my bros out here in Far Rock is Hybrid. My son Fee, my, my bro More Green, like I just told you, Scratch More Green. When I say Hybrid, meaning they're part of me. You understand me? And they crib. Like, I, I know some real Latin kings that I mess with, yeah. I, you just seen I met one in the store tonight in mm -hmm. OV, the one that said Five Love. Yeah. Like, it's it's real it's realness in everything. Do people still hold them values of brotherly love? Yeah, but it's by the not by the masses. It's by who you choose and who choose to to have you as they brother. That's how you know your brother because it ain't just somebody that you choose. It's somebody that chooses you too. You understand what I'm saying? Because that, 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 that's the worst trick that men always fall for. They open up their arms to a man. The man ain't open his arms back. His arms stay by his side. Then that's not a complete hug. That's a half a hug. That's not a real hug. If you put your hand out to shake my hand and I hand you my elbow, that's not a shake. You understand what I'm saying? So do brotherly love exist? Yes, with me and my team, it do hybrid, the mighty click clack. Most of the motherfuckers I fuck with in Far Rock, like I just named King Street all the way down the block, uh, All Fox, almost forgot you, All Fox. Like, I told you, I can't just keep going on and on for days. Like, it's real motherfuckers everywhere. You know what I mean? My boy Prem, Jig, G.I.B. I mean, I can't, like I said, I could just keep going on and on and on. I, I could just, this could be a never ending subject. Do I think that it's still brotherly love? Yeah. Does it exist? Within every crew the same way it should? No, because if you look at it, it's always some turmoil in every crew between each other. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, let's say we take all the greatness out of all of them cliques and discard the garbage. Does that all become one good clique? Yeah, that becomes a great clique. That's like having a bunch of leaders together. See, me, I, me myself, I fuck with the army of generals. I keep telling people that. I don't fuck with soldiers. I fuck with the army of generals. That's impossible. Everybody's a general. Yeah, every nigga I fuck with is a general. Whether your name is Star, whether your name is Dead Eye, whether your name is motherfucking AK, whether your name is Trubs, whether your name is Tommy Burchett, Chucky Burchett, Jack Burchett, Trey Burchett. All I fuck with is leaders. All I fuck with is generals. Men that can make their own decisions at any given time. That when I'm going wrong, they can stop me and pull my coat and say, Yo, bro, this is kind of wrong. This is how you should do this. You dig? And that's what life is really about. So do I think that there's still brotherly love? For me, it is. For those that it ain't, I'm sorry to hear that shit. <laughs> Fuck out of here. Like, yeah, it's brotherly love. And what are some next upcoming projects that you got coming out, Sha? I... I'm glad you asked that too. Um, mad shout outs again to my brother CLK. Mad shout outs to Shooter Low. Mad shout out to my nigga Mitch Brand. Um, mad shout outs to Big Drip. We got some shit called Hybrid, right? Mad shout outs to my nigga Feeve on this side of, side of the fam. Like, I told you that Hybrid is just basically, it's Bloods and Crips together that's in Brooklyn right now. But it don't branch out here to Far Rock, you know. It always been out here. I mean, brothers communicate with each other. Like I said, real brothers always gonna recognize real brothers. You know what I mean? Like the, there's a big brother named Chez out here. He's one of he's one of the big Crips out here. That's that's my bro. Like I, I fuck with him. Like that's my brother. If he in pain, then I'm in pain. That that's what I mean, man. Like I I don't play that color shit. None of that. Like my color my color is. 
that we on the same pattern, that we on the same wavelength. That's what color is to me, you know what I mean? It, it, it isn't a pigmentation of a person's skin, it's wh what your movement is. Because if you, if you walk the same walk I walk and you talk the same way I talk, then I guess we on the same movement, you heard? And that's, that, that's how I move, man. And what are your final words for our viewers? Um, stay focused, man. Stay at peace, man. Stay serene. Keep your thoughts together, man. Love your family, man. Love your time on this earth. For sometimes it be so short, man. It just slip by in the blink of an eye. And most importantly, man, respect yourself, man. Honestly, man. Because if you don't respect yourself, ain't nobody else going to do it. On that note, man, man, shout out to my boy for having me, man. You already know, man. Anytime you want, you come holler at me, man. Um, man, shout out to everybody that view this, man. That sit back and really want to want to want to hear the truth about some shit. And for those that don't, man, man, shout out to y'all, man, because what good will my believers be without the disbelievers, man? Y'all have a blessed night, man. My note, hybrid. Triple say the darkness took you straight to the light. You learned it at first sight, so you adjusted it right. Still, you was once got it like a bat out of hell. Like a nigga that got life, never leaving the cell. Like a runner in a race, saying like some fit. What about the one born, no legs in a wheelchair? Or the boxer that keep fighting, never getting a win? Or the winner that keep winning at the beginning and end? I confess to the Almighty, no more not sin. Who's everything that has an end and has a new beginning? Went over and drew Ali, went tell him. Contagious like herpes, syphilis, and BB. Keep it now like Drew Brees, throwing bullets and bombs. And all of this takes place by extending my arm. Can I drop the bomb? Oh, yes, I can. Move with the blood that's like DJ Dad. Who is the man? That's right there. Who is the bitch with the pick in her hair? Somebody who ain't tutty trying to give me some time. Talking about you like my body, that's the thing that she's not. They say love is like a plate, I just heard it's a box. Said it's hot.